Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you what's new in GIMP version 2.10.6. Minutes ago, the GIMP team released the Windows installer for GIMP 2.10.6. This is, of course, the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. And surprisingly, there are a lot of new features that come with this tutorial, so we're gonna go ahead and get into that today. But of course, before we dive into all that, I wanna direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, as well as Project Translate. You can watch one of our GIMP playlists, support our channel on Patreon, and of course, view the poll of the week results, so definitely check those items out. You can also enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here's the downloads page where you can download the latest version of GIMP. I recommend going with the direct download here, but you do have the option to download via BitTorrent. And right now I'm using a Windows computer, which it's gone ahead and recognized right here. And you could cycle through the different operating systems to see if your operating system is supported. And actually it looks like the GIMP 2.10.4 version does now have a Mac OS installer, which is actually news to me. Uh, so if you are a Mac user, go ahead and download that Mac download there. That is actually really awesome news. So of course, I recommend downloading this latest version of GIMP, and then you can run the installer to install the program on your computer. And once you've done that, open it up on your computer as I've done here on my laptop. So the first new feature I'm gonna highlight is the little planet filter. And this is actually based off of a very popular technique uh, called a tiny planet usually. I guess the GIMP team decided to call it the little planet filter instead of the tiny planet. I'm not exactly sure why. But what this feature does is it takes your image and it creates a 360 by 180 degree equal rectangular panorama. And that essentially makes your image look like a little planet. So that's pretty obvious based on the name of the filter. And you can access this filter. You're gonna start by having an image here. This is an image I just downloaded on Pixabay for free, of course. And make sure you're clicked on that active layer here. And you can access this new filter by going to Filters, Map, Little Planet. And now you'll see your image is basically turned into that 360 by 180 degree equirectangular or equal rectangular panorama. And so you've got some settings here and you can basically take this and if I move the pan setting, it'll rotate my image. So now I can, for instance, put this big skyscraper more uh, up here towards the top instead of it was down here when we first started. So we can reposition the photo. And then the tilt here is sort of the tilt angle of the camera itself. So you can see we can either create a perfect circle or make it a little bit off center. And that just creates another cool effect there. And then you've got some spin here, and that pretty much does the same thing as the uh, pan does. Uh, but if you see there, the exact description says that it spins around the camera axis. And then you've got the zoom, so that's how far in you want to zoom in with this. So you could zoom way out, like so, and that's obviously way too far out. Or you can zoom way in if you want, and uh, create this sort of look here, which is pretty cool. And I'll just go ahead and back that back up so that we can see the entire city in here. And you can inverse the transform and that creates sort of a weird effect there. So I'll just uncheck that. And then the resampling method, that just kind of determines how the pixels are reassembled here as you make changes to it, as you are adjusting the settings here. And so by default, it's set to nearest. And actually, if you hover over here, you'll see there's a pretty long description of what this does. And you'll see here that it recommends going with nearest if you're going to use basically this setting here. And if you're going to use the inverse transform, it recommends using uh, some of these more high quality resampling methods. And then you can change the type of input here. So if you have a selection area, you could just perform this on the selection area, or you can go ahead and click to use the entire layer as the input. And as always in GIMP 2.10 Gaggle filters, you can preview this. So that is obviously what this looks like after, and then you can split preview it, so before on the right, after on the left, and go ahead and click OK, and that'll apply your changes to the photo. So that makes the process of creating that little planet or that tiny planet look in your images super easy, and it gives you a little bit more control than, say, going in manually and trying to perform that effect. The next new feature is another filter, and this is called the long shadow filter. Again, it's a gaggle filter, and what it does is it allows you to apply long shadows to objects or text within your images. So I'll come back here over to GIMP, and I've created a blank composition here, a blank canvas, which you can do by going to File, New, and of course setting your width and height. And I'll just demonstrate a few ways this long shadow filter works. So I'll start by creating a new layer. And I'm just going to keep this layer name at Object, and set the fill width to Transparency, and click OK. 
So now I'll come over and grab my rectangle select tool and draw a rectangle. And I'll grab my bucket fill tool here and just fill this in with the foreground color I have selected here. And I'll click inside here. And I'll go to select none. And now with this object layer selected, I'll go to filters, light and shadow, long shadow. And now you'll see it draws a shadow coming off this box here. And there's several settings here. So we've got a style and right now it's set to finite, which means that this is going to end eventually somewhere. Or we can have infinite, which means it's just going to go all the way to the end of the page. And then we also have fading, so it'll fade out here. It'll basically create almost like a gradient look. And so it'll start with the color you have selected here and just fade out to whatever the background color is. And this is actually really cool. I created a tutorial on how to create like long flat shadow icons, but this really just breaks it down into a single step where all you need to do is add this filter. Plus the filter has a little bit more functionality and you can sort of move things around and play with things before you actually apply the long shadow to the object or the text. And so it really gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot more creativity and just in general more options when creating a long shadow. And so again, I can adjust the angle here and let me just change this back to finite. And the cool thing I can do is I can grab this color and I could change this to like a slightly different color from whatever my original rectangle was. And it starts to make this look like a 3D shape here. And again, I can continue to adjust this angle until I get the look I want. And then you can also adjust the composition here so you can have the shadow plus the image, which is the object you're working with. Or you can just have the shadow or you could have the shadow with the original image cut out. So you've got some cool options there. I'm just going to go with the shadow plus image option. And of course you can preview it before and after there with the split preview. And you could save this as a preset and then go ahead and click OK and that will apply your long shadow directly to the active layer here with the object. And you can also do this with text. So I'll grab my text tool and let's say I just type in GIMP here and I'll click on here and change my color to white. Click OK. And let me go ahead and increase my font size and grab my move tool and move this up. If I click on my text layer here and go to filters, light and shadow, long shadow, and then change my color to let's say a white color or a whitish color, you can see now there is a long shadow on my GIMP uh, text layer there. And I'll click OK. Right now this shadow, no matter what I choose, is only going to go to the edge of this layer. So you can see this kind of abruptly gets cut off there with that layer edge. And I can change this again to fading and it starts to fade out but you can't really see it. Uh, let me click cancel and go to layer, layer to image size, and that makes my text layer the size of the entire image. And let me try that again. So I'll go to filters, light and shadow, long shadow, and I'll choose a different color. So now you can see, we could see the entire length of the shadow here. And I can adjust the length here. So if I want to make this shorter like this, just to make this text pop a little bit, make it look more 3D, I can do that. Or I can make it go, you know, as long as I want. I'll just shrink that down to about there and let me change the style to fading again. So now you can see it's just sort of gradually fading out and you can shift the midpoint here of where the fade occurs on this fade out so I can put it right there and you can see it gives us this really cool effect like the GIMP text is just sort of fading into the distance here or I could stretch it out like that if I wanted to. But you guys can see the potential of this. You can create some really cool things using this new long shadow filter. So now I'll click OK to apply that. And you can see just by applying that long shadow to two objects, we actually now have this really cool looking composition. Sticking with the text tool, the next new feature found in GIMP 2.10.6 is the ability to create vertical text. And this is something that's useful for a lot of East Asian languages. And those are languages that write, you know, up and down or down and up versus only from left to right horizontally or right to left. So I'll start by grabbing my text tool. And actually there's something I noticed with the long shadow feature, which is that uh, usually when you click on a composition to create a new text layer, it'll just automatically create that text layer over here. But after you've used the long shadow filter, it's going to ask you if you want to create a new layer or edit the long shadow text layer again. So for instance, if I click over here, you'll see it says confirm text editing and uh, it'll prompt you with all this stuff here. And then it's going to ask you if you want to create a new layer or edit the existing text layer or cancel. I'll just hit create new layer. And the reason I point this out is that even when I created a brand new layer on top of this GIMP layer, it still gave me that prompt. So it appears to be perhaps maybe even a bug, but I'll just select all this text and then type my new text, which is just Davies. 
And I'll change the color of this text to this sort of turquoise font again and grab my move tool and move this over. So now I'll go back to my text tool, make sure I'm clicked on this text and the way to use this new vertical text feature is to right click on here. And down here you'll now see, it'll say from left to right and then from right to left as well. But you also have an option for vertical right to left. So there's one option. So now instead of having to rotate the text, you can just select that option and it'll go ahead and rotate that text by 90 degrees for you. So that's actually super convenient. Or you can right click and you can change the option there. And that was vertical right to left upright orientation. So now the letters are all upright and they move downwards. And then you've also got left to right mixed orientation. And if I right click, you've got left to right upright orientation. And so you've got four different options there for creating vertical text. If your text gets cut off here in the text box, you can just expand the text box. And now all of that will fit there. And let's say we go to layer, layer to image size, and now go to filters, light and shadow, long shadow. Now we can put a long shadow on this text here. And so you can have vertical text with a long shadow if you want. So for those of you who have watched my tutorials over the years, you will recognize that these two filters here actually reduce a lot of the work that we used to have to do to make changes to our text, whether that be rotating the text, making the text appear as if it's vertical, or making the text appear as if it has a shadow to it. So these are really awesome new features, and I'm really excited the GIMP team has added them to 2.10.6. So the next new feature found in this latest version of GIMP is an improvement that's been made to the straighten feature found in the measurement tool. And for those of you who have seen my tutorial on what's new in GIMP 2.10.4, you got a, a pretty detailed look into this new feature. So I'm not gonna go over it too much in this tutorial here, since really the changes aren't super noticeable. But if I come over here to this tiny planet image we made earlier, and I grab my measurement tool, of course I can click and drag, and let's say I wanna straighten this image based on this line here in the image. So I can adjust this here, and then come over here and hit straighten and that'll straighten this image out. This image wasn't crooked to begin with, so this doesn't look right. I'll hit Control Z. But basically, the GIMP development team says they've made an improvement to the straighten feature, so it should work a little bit better now in GIMP 2.10.6. The next new feature goes by the name Optimized Drawable Preview Rendering, and yes, I know this is a mouthful and probably the geekiest term the GIMP team has come up with to date, but at its core, what this does is it basically allows the layer previews uh, to asynchronously load or load all independently versus waiting on each other to load, and and what that does is essentially speeds up the performance of GIMP so that GIMP doesn't have to wait for all these layer previews to load before it can move on with whatever function it is you're trying to do. And let me go ahead and show you an example of what I'm talking about here because I know I probably don't make any sense to you right now. Let me open up a project that has several layers here. So I'll go to Open Recent. And I think some of you watched my most recent tutorial here on how to create this composition. But you'll see here I've got several layers and all of these layers each have a preview to show you what is on that layer. So this layer has a vignette and so that layer preview shows a little vignette there. And if I move down you'll see that the background image here also has its own layer preview and you guys get the point. But let's say that some of these layers were in layer groups so I can click on here to create a new layer group and let me name this mist and highlights. And then I'll drag this storm layer below the layer group, but I'm going to drag this horizon highlight into this layer group and this mist into this layer group. And then let me create one more layer group and I'll move this up here towards the top. And I'll just add this sun glow in here and then this highlight layer in here. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a second, but basically now we have all these layer previews and then even our layer group has a preview. So let's say you've got a super large image that you're working on and it has tons of these layers and layer groups, uh, so much so that you can scroll down for several seconds and not hit the bottom. So let's say for example this bottom layer was the thousandth layer in your composition and GIMP can have infinite layers and layer groups provided that your computer can handle it theoretically. But let's say this is your thousandth layer. Instead of having to wait for all 999 layer previews above this to finish loading, it'll now load asynchronously along with the rest of these layer previews previews and that just really speeds up that process. There is still an exception to this feature however because the layer groups will still not load asynchronously. They will wait for the above layer group to finish uh, loading up the preview before the next one will go. Uh, but if this is a problem for you and it does significantly slow down your workflow, you can actually toggle the layer group previews off by going to edit preferences and come over here to interface. And then under previews, you can check or uncheck enable layer and channel previews. 
So if I uncheck that, you'll see that all of these layers no longer have previews. Or just uncheck the enable layer group previews and you'll see that the layer groups now no longer have previews. So I'm not keeping these changes, so I'll hit cancel. So the next new feature is a simpler file dialog filtering system. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I go to file, export as, and this will bring on my export image dialog box. Here you'll see a list of a whole bunch of different file types and I can save my file up here. Here's the name of my file. And then this part right here is the file extension. And as always, I can come down here and scroll through the different file types and I can save this as a GIF or a JPEG. And you'll see that when I'm clicking on these different file types now, the new feature is that it'll only show the file types that match the file type you currently have selected. So it'll filter out all the other file types that aren't JPEGs in this case. Or if I come up to a GIF image, it'll filter out everything that's not a GIF or a GIF, however you want to pronounce that. So in this case, I don't have any of those file types in here. And if I go to PNG, it'll filter out everything that's not a PNG. So all that's left are PNG files. So this just makes it easier to find different file types on your computer. But you can also come over here and check the show all files while you're saving. And this is how it's always been done, which is that it's always displayed all the different file types in GIMP while you're exporting. But this is useful if you want to, you know, save this as maybe the same name here, but a different file type. So right now I selected the XCF file type and I'll change that to JPEG. So now this will have the same name as that XCF, but it'll now be a JPEG file type. So if I uncheck the show all files again, that XCF will now disappear. And now once again, all that is showing up is the JPEG file type. I don't want to export this right now, so I'll just hit cancel. All right, guys, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit our website for more GIMP video and text tutorials, and you can enroll in our GIMP best-selling photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher, and I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.